Okay, we're recording. Please go ahead. Welcome, everyone, to the uh, Charter Review Committee um, meeting on November 14th. Uh, this was postponed from the 7th, I believe, and um, we're going to get started. Uh, I will first go through the folks who are here and ask if you can hear and be heard. Um, so I'll start on my screen with Meg. I can hear you. Can you hear Excellent. me? Yeah. Bernie? Mm -hmm. Present. Raphael? Present. Erica? Hello. Excellent. Um, so that is a quorum of the committee. We have Andy, um, Dan, and... Uh, Ken and Marcus, who can't join us tonight, um, but that's a quorum of the committee. So we'll get started. Um, and I guess we'll start with the minutes. We don't have, I wasn't able to review Meg's draft okay. and I don't have a draft from the last meeting for you. So okay. I would ask that we skip that for tonight. Sounds good. So we'll postpone the minutes. Um, and hopefully be able to get to them next meeting. So my next agenda item is public comment. Um, so anyone who would like to speak um, for public comment, please raise your hand uh, on Zoom, like in the physical raise hand button, um, or press star nine from a telephone, and you can uh, come into the meeting, make your public comment for a limit of three minutes, and uh, tell us what you have to share. You seen anybody, Athena? I'm not seeing anybody. Okay, excellent. Um, so with no public comments, we will move to the <coughs> meeting schedule. Um, and this is sort of more of a housekeeping thing, if you will. But basically, I postponed it from uh, November this meeting from November seventh. Um, given some concerns uh, that Athena emailed me, and um, <coughs> what we're thinking is at least from my perspective, what I'm thinking to do is I'll let Athena explain some of her concerns and let folks ask questions. But I think what I'm going to do is have us postpone the next meeting on the 21st. Um, and uh, in addition to that, send out a form to ask committee members um, other times in November and December that they are available um, to see if anyone's available on Tuesdays and Wednesdays um, in the evening um, and see if that's an appropriate time for us to make up some of our meetings, given that we won't meet on the 21st um, and we can't meet on the 28th because that's Thanksgiving, um, as well as in December on the 26th, that's the start of Hanukkah and Kwanzaa. So that will mean that we next meet on the 12th. Um, so we're going to try to find uh, Tuesday and Wednesday by the 21st that work for us to make up meetings. So hopefully keep your eye out for two or three Tuesdays and Wednesdays in your calendar that might work. And an eye out for the form that we'll ask people to fill out by the 21st um, to schedule those. So that's the decision I'm making and I will welcome anyone who has questions or comments, um, but I'll first hand it over to Athena to sort of explain um, how she felt. I know she shared the email with you all today. Yeah, Dan, I, I didn't realize that the email had been shared outside the meeting. So Dan asked that it go to all the members and I sent that around for folks in the audience um, to give some background. I emailed Julian asking to postpone the, the meeting last week and the meeting that is scheduled coming up for next week because I won't be available and um, our staff is stretched thin. And so in consideration for their personal time and my availability, I ask that those meetings be moved. I got into a little bit more than that in the email and I'm happy to answer questions, but I can leave it there for now. Excellent, thank you. So I'll take questions, raise your hand on Zoom. Um, and if I can't answer them, I'll ask Athena. Meg? Um, I wonder if it's possible for us to meet not in the evening because that is hard for people with families, even like 8 a.m. to 10 or, uh, four to six or three to five. I just, you said that we're gonna consider evening options. Um, I wonder if we can, if it's possible to have additional times considered. 
yeah, I would I would be open to considering um an early morning time or a uh like afternoon like three to five time. Um, I don't want to go generally like in the middle of the workday because that might be difficult for folks from the public to attend. Um, and some of our committee members. So I think that uh evenings or very early in the morning, um, like we did that first time. Uh, if we wanted to go a little earlier in the evening, like five o'clock um, or whatever, I'd be open to that too. Other questions, comments, thoughts? Raphael? I assume there's a poll that'll be sent for us to let you all know when we're available. Yes, Is that I, believe, right? I believe right. Erica or Athena will send that out um, to be filled out by the 21st. Yeah, the, right, thank you. The, Raphael and others, the way I understood our our process going forward for this scheduling issue that we're having is that Athena will offer some limited alternative days other than these Thursday evenings for the remainder of 2024. And then from that, we will, I will set up something to sort of survey this group and see which of those dates might be optimal. Um, and just while I have the floor, Meg, I would love to have alternative times during the day. I work nine to five as, Oh. So it it doesn't doesn't preclude every every meeting of every possible time, but it does mean I can't make that a regular time. Right. So I'm um, sorry. Thank you. No, I appreciate that, Erica. Um, Athena. Um. So I did many rounds. You'll remember of polls trying to find meeting times for this group. Um. Before your first meeting, so I'm passing the baton with gratitude to Erica. Um. And I will work with her to make sure that the the dates and times in the polls are ones that work for me. And then um, she can help coordinate with members to find uh, dates that work for all of you. And um, I know that the committee adopted a meeting schedule, but there's no, it, it's not set in stone per se. Um, you can add meetings, you can add public uh, outreach events and so on. That's sort of uh, you know, just what folks can expect. and with the understanding that things can be added and changed. There's even a little line at the end saying it's subject to change, so it's fine. Yeah, um, and I will, It uh, at least my understanding is that, that those meeting times and stuff is generally in the discretion of the chair. So uh, I'm happy to take input as I took from Athena and other members, but generally that is within my discretion. Um, so, then I think moving on from that, if we don't have any other questions. Yeah, Erica. Thank you, Julian. Uh, before we move on to our agenda item, I wonder if I could just have the floor on a non-agenda item. I just wanted to say something sort of for the record. I think that there is uh, topics in, not anticipated uh, by the chair on agenda item 14, which if it's not related to this, I think that's probably the best place for that. Okay. Okay, excellent. Um, so any other questions, comments, et cetera? No? Um, hybrid meetings. Um, I This sort of ties into the outreach discussion that's later on our agenda, um, but I would like to see if we could have a hybrid meeting on the 12th in aims or effort to uh, to do some community outreach um, and get to meet with people um, and sort of get the process rolling. I've heard from a few members who feel like it's things are moving too slowly. And I would, in some essence, agree with that perspective that, uh, that we have gotten off to a not extremely slow, but somewhat slow start. Um, so I would like to uh, see if the committee is open to having a hybrid meeting on the 12th um, and December 12th. And if there are suggestions of where we would like to do that meeting um, to get outreach and more public opinion. Athena? Uh, there, there are technology restrictions um, to do a hybrid meeting. If we wanna do a hybrid meeting like we do for the council, then we need to do it in the town room. 
Okay. Um, so I guess understanding that, how do we, as a committee, if we want to have a meeting or outreach event um, at one of the apartment complexes or at a park or something mm -hmm. like that, obviously the weather's not the best for a park, but you get my drift. Um, may I respond or do you want to call on yeah. me? No, go right ahead. Um, so um, it, it, it depends. Um, you can have in-person meetings. There's no restriction that says that you can't have a okay. fully in-person meeting. Um, if you are trying to just do outreach and share information and hand out flyers and sort of chat with people and maybe you'll have less than a quorum, hopefully, then you can do those kinds of events and not post them as official meetings. Okay. Um, it seems like those kinds of events aren't intended to be meetings because you're not deliberating on something. You're maybe right. just sharing information. So depending on the intent of the meeting on the 12th, um, that will maybe inform what type of meeting and where and what kind of technology we'll need. So I think okay. if if you if we talk about that, then that will help help us figure out how to do instead of just like all yeah. of the things that we might do. <laughs> no, I, I see what you mean. Um, Bernie? Yeah, um, if we have a meeting that's a, a formal meeting, that's something that a quorum of, or world greater or the committee will be present, then the space we're in has to be <clears throat> accessible and available to people with um, mobility and sensory handicaps. Okay. So that, um, that would mean if you want to meet somewhere at a conference room in a, uh, another place or uh, uh, a, a meeting room that uh, a game room or activity room at one of the uh, oh. complexes, we'd have to post it. <clears throat> we'd have to post it for that space at a date and time for certain. And we'd have to make sure that it's accessible in, in, in large scale. Uh, okay. Not just, you know, for, for somebody like me, who can amble in. Uh, right. It's got to be uh it's got to be available to really available to people. That's why I think um, if we're going to do hybrid meetings, we're probably we're safest to hold them in town hall because town hall is accessible. And if we needed to have someone who uh, could sign or, or uh, uh, you, you know, have, have some other kinds of uh, challenges, we could make those arrangements, I think, easier through the town than uh, uh, trying to do it remotely. If we want to hold just general, and I, I think I suggested this in my notes, uh, you know, we could do uh, office hours, we could do coffee hours, uh, where a couple of members, of the, one or two members of the committee would just be present for a conversation. Um, and that's, you know, we'd have to be, um, <clears throat> we have to be careful about um, not getting outside the open meeting law with this and it's I mean it's silly but it's it's what's the it's the, right. rule. the law <laughs> um but yeah no I I mean at least I'll interject sorry I should raise my hand to actually comment um but I would just say like yes there is accessibility concerns I don't think that should preclude us from using spaces that are outside of town hall you know there's plenty of accessible parks they're probably our private spaces. Um, we we have libraries. Yeah, libraries, exactly. That sort of thing that are accessible. And I wouldn't want it to preclude us simply because I think there's also an accessibility issue, at least from anecdotally what I've noticed, of who shows up to meetings on Zoom or in person in the town room. Um, that we may not, even though that in, in your respects, yes, has an accessibility aspect, there's also the sort of boots on the ground reality that who's showing up to most town meetings and events in the town room or on Zoom is not representative of Amherst mm -hmm. in the town. So I think that going out into uh, the community, whether that be the North Amherst Library or Groff Park or whatever, is, is a worthwhile endeavor given that those spaces, I believe, are accessible. But um, cold. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Erica? Yeah, um, I was under the impression that the, the hybrid meeting that you were proposing for December 12th was a meeting of this committee 
And I think what is being discussed is more like a public event to to right invite the invite the public with a different kind of purpose around collecting uh, feedback or engaging in discussion. Not that the public isn't coming, isn't invited and welcome to come to all of our meetings, but that I thought you were describing something that was sort of more um, with less of our own agenda and more kind of organized and described and advertised as a public comment uh, gathering session. And so I think just clarifying what what you're what you mean no. by that, because I think hybrid meeting yeah. means something different for this committee than it does for a public event. Yeah, so, I might not have put it well on the agenda item. What I was thinking was that we should have those public <laughs> events like we were discussing. And that's why I had agenda item um, for creating the outreach plan um, and create resources for public input that we'll get to. But what else I was thinking was this separately was to have these hybrid meetings in an effort to let people know of our committee business and have a larger demographic and diversity of folks actually see us operate, um, which I think is important, at least trying to branch out and say, yes, there's ways you can get your input heard, but for folks who might just be genuinely curious to, curious to see us operate, but don't know about us because they don't check the town website or don't have a car to drive to town hall or any of those sort of things that we should try to expand um, into the town and into the neighborhoods. And and so the December 12th that you were proposing is in is a is a regular committee meeting, yes. Yes. but hybrid as if as we did on our first session. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. Just a different location um, was what I was hoping to do. Mm -hmm. um, so does anybody have a suggestion for a location we could explore? Meg? But it seems like Athena said the technology won't work in another place, another location for a hybrid meeting. Is that accurate? Did I mishear? To run a meeting like we do for the council in a hybrid fashion, I, I need to be able to do that in the town room. Um, so, okay. so making things work with the audio and microphones and preventing people from getting feedback in their different microphones, we need a different audio setup to run the meeting through so that we can do that. So people on Zoom can be heard if they want to make comments. It's not like I can just bring a right. laptop and then we have a hybrid meeting set up. It's, okay. it's much more onerous than that. And okay. so I, if, if you'd I, like I, to have just a hybrid meeting like we did at the first meeting, then that's easy to do in the town room. I'm, I can check now and make sure okay. the town room is in, available if that's what you'd like to do. And then in in the future, if we wanna have specific outreach type of meetings yeah. and you'd like to have some some more set up than, than what I can do single-handedly, then we can work with community participation officers and IT okay. and do something special, but that's not something that I wanna offer for every meeting. That's not a reasonable request. Okay, what I was thinking was maybe, Bernie, go ahead. Well, I, I was, I'm thinking we might be getting out ahead of ourselves. Uh, I, I'm still advocating for having a discussion, uh, a meeting devoted to talking about the charge that the council has given us and going through step-by-step step the charter, indicating what areas are, uh, if you will, fair game for us to uh, us to discuss and make recommendation versus areas that where we might, you know, have a subsequent after action report or something like that. Uh, we haven't done that. You know, I, mean, I think it's important. I also think it's important to hear from council, uh, town, um, town attorney, mm -hmm. uh, as to you know what this um, <clears throat> what 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 the, the the framework is for our our review and. Again, to confirm where it is in the charter where we can make substantive recommendations versus saying these are issues that we've heard. Until we do that, we're going to hold public meetings and people are going to come in and not be focused. I mean, this is fairly esoteric stuff here. I, I will venture to guess that 90% of the voters in town haven't read the charter. Yep. Uh, you, you know, so, so we, we're not... We're not, in my humble opinion, we're not organized enough to go out and start doing um, 
Q&A or presentations to the public. Uh, you, you know, we'll get we can get into this a little bit more when we talk about a voter outreach or uh, an outreach plan or or uh, uh, public input, because I really think we're going to have to do some framing for ourselves and not go out to folks with open ended questions. What do you think of the charter? Uh, Erica, <laughs> you know, uh, I would agree with Bernie for the most part, and I would just add that um, what I would take from what you've proposed, Julian, is that it is important that whatever, whenever we decide to amp up our efforts to get the public in this room or in public events, that we need a good lead time and not just do it sort of the, you know, the week before and advertise that as a regular meeting, but give ourselves an, a, an ample sort of runway to promote the fact that we are inviting um, people to come and engage in either our meeting or in a public event. Um, so that that's the that's the key piece that I'm taking from what you're saying. You're looking out ahead about a month, and I think that's a uh, really useful way to think about it. Okay, yeah. Um, I guess I'm thinking, I think Bernie has a good point that we should actually go through the charter, like have it on our desks and look what's fair game, what's not fair game, what what would require us to um, us to go to the state legislature as opposed to what we could actually do ourselves um, as a town. So I think that that's a really good idea um, that you mentioned to do that and I'll certainly include it on the next agenda. I would prefer if we could do a, our meeting on December 12th, maybe in person. Um, and I know it was recently renovated so we could use the North Amherst Library. Um, is a location to do a solely in-person meeting. Um, that would, at least in my understanding, resolve some of the concerns around having a hybrid meeting and feedback and that sort of thing. Um, so maybe it'd be possible to do a fully in-person meeting in the North Amherst Library with, uh, with, sorry, I'm blanking on the word, um, with the charter in front of us uh, and looking over it and seeing what's fair game and not. Erica and then Raphael. Thank you. Um, I feel like a wet blanket, but I, I've said this in this meeting before, and I'm sorry to have to say it again. I am not able to do in-person meetings. Um, it's an accessibility issue for me, and I'm not okay. going to be able to do that. So I, I hope that we can include it in the minutes because I feel I feel a bit bad about having to repeat it. Okay. <laughs> but it's important to me that that I don't want to have to douse this idea. It doesn't mean I can't participate in any of our planned public events, but as a as a standard for my participation in the committee, I'm meeting virtually. Okay, uh, Raphael and then Meg. So I heard what Bernie and Erica shared about the work um, in terms of going through the charter. I don't want to lose sight though that I feel like part of our work is letting the public know about our existence and the charter itself. And I don't think that's a heavy lift in terms of here's what we do, here's this charter. Um, I think that still needs to be on the table. Um, so I just want to do, don't want to lose sight of that. So how do we get word out to a number of people in town like this committee exists, here's the charter. Yeah, Meg? I raised my hand to, then Erica said what I was gonna say, but I raised it again to support what uh, Raphael just said. I suggest that we write a opinion piece in the Gazette or the bulletin that we all sign that just says, who here's who we are, we exist. We're looking for input. Here are some of the ways you can provide input. I think that would be a kind of public statement that isn't typical of town committees. Mm -hmm. And um, it would be a good start with some information about how people contact us, what they're, what, especially after our next meeting, when we've clarified what our, what our scope is and exactly uh, what we're able to talk about or want to talk about. Yeah. That's my um, suggestion, a comment, an opinion piece okay. in the Gazette. It's they're not hard to get in, man. They, 
they're looking for new ideas. Let's just let yeah. me tell you. Every well, time, we also you know. we we also have the what's left of the bulletin, um, and we well, have a couple. Oh, so, and we have a couple of local we have a couple of local blogs that are fairly yeah. well read that would be happy to publish a Very, they both well. they all would but do a sort of piece that we all like we all somebody drafts and we all sure. edit and then uh, just get it out there with i think that would signal a lot of uh, we're i don't i could say more i'm not going to say more now but um the gazette and the bulletin they often you can get it in both are very eager to have some new voices and new ideas yeah erica i would second what meg said i just would uh, encourage us to be ready for that and have uh the other venues for feedback and a, a little bit more up and running so that we can publicize ourselves and direct people to a platform um in which to receive input and i think that's where we should be putting our uh, the the. I think we have agenda items that that help us address that tonight. But I think it's a yeah. great idea. Excellent. Um. So I guess we are sort of limited to town hall. If one of our members can't attend, uh, in person, and then uh, the feedback and stuff on a hybrid meeting is difficult to coordinate in other settings. So I'll bring back up the idea of getting into neighborhoods and discussing that in point 10 and 11, or in, excuse me, um, point nine and 10. But do we wanna just say that we're gonna do a, uh, a hybrid meeting on the 12th in town hall where we actually have the charter in front of us and go through and sort of highlight what people are interested in, what's fair game, et cetera and maybe invite the town attorney to that meeting. And hopefully by then we'll be able to have um, outreach mechanisms enough that we can sort of more widely publicize that meeting. I, I would agree with that plan, um, except that we had, I believe, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, that we had talked about like having our kind of initial review of the charter uh, a little bit under our feet before inviting the legal counsel so that we have some pointed uh, questions or sort of targeted, a little bit more targeted um, things to bring up with that person. Um, I don't, I'm not trying to slow things down, but I, but I feel like that, that uh, activity that you're describing of having the charter in front of us and sort of like sifting through and highlighting and pulling out the um, the most salient issues for us is an is an important activity before we have a paid counsel present. Um, I'm hoping that we can meet before then, but it doesn't. It seems difficult. So maybe we need to sequence those things. Is what I'm okay. Suggesting. So you're suggesting having legal counsel or having the charter to review and discuss up before we uh invite legal counsel that that's my suggestion that was my understanding from our the previous meeting where we talked about when okay. to when to invite this person if right away or sort of hold off a little i had the sense yeah. that we agreed that we would hold off a little hold off i agree no that seems like a good sense so maybe it's best to um well our next meeting our next meeting currently scheduled obviously we're going to try to schedule some in between then but our next meeting currently scheduled is the 12th um so i think that would be an appropriate time to actually be reviewing the charter and opening it up and then maybe waiting to have legal review at a meeting after that Um, so I guess I've, I'd like to set things more in stone than just discussing. Um, so I guess I'll fully make the motion that we meet at town hall, um, on the 12th, uh, in a hybrid setting to, uh, to actually review and open up the charter, um, itself. Can I get a second for that? 
Meg? Thank you. Um, so I'll go in order. Erica? Yes. Meg? You're muted. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Uh, Bernie? Yeah. Raphael? Yes. Okay, excellent. And so now we'll move to budgetary resources request and discussion. So this will be a vote as well. Um, and I'll put a motion on the table after we have a little bit of a discussion. Um, so basically for folks who weren't there, I know Bernie, you were, um, but for folks who weren't there at the last finance committee meeting, um, the town has a pretty large amount of free cash that uh, has been come coming off of the budget, meaning that it is the budget itself is, has been less expensive than we projected. Um, so basically we are sort of deciding what to do with that. And some members of the town council, um, as well as some members of this committee have suggested that the charter review committee put in a request for a certain amount of money to have a consultant. And that could help ease the workload on us, could help ease the workload on Athena, or we could assign them a specific thing to do. Um, and that at least my understanding is the charter commission previously had a consultant that cost them about $20,000. So I assume we would be looking in a similar range, $20,000, $25,000. Athena, you had your hand up, but you put it down. So go ahead. Mm -hmm. I I was itching to correct that the, the budget didn't end up costing less. There was also, so there's a number of reasons that we end up with free cash at the end of the year, and we don't need to get into all of those reasons, but um, okay. some of them were very wise investments by our treasurer, and I don't want to discount the, the good work of our staff. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Got it. So some of it is investment income in that as well. Great. Um, Meg? Did you, two things. Did you just say that money is available or it might be available? And my second question or top S comment is, um, having been on the other charter, the last charter commission, mm -hmm. I strongly encourage us to get extremely clear about what we want the consultants to do and what we don't want, What so that it's I mean, what yep. they, we want them to do is obviously implies what we don't want them to do, but uh, because uh, I don't need to critique the last process. They were very nice people, really nice, but um, we ran out of time. And I mean, do we want, I know we don't have a time limit, but I don't think any of us want to be sitting here for five years. So yeah, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. I just um, think we should get clear about what we want them to do and okay. particularly the degree to which it's on the administrative end or on the uh, research end and you know, generating yep. ideas. I mean, there's a wide range of uh, what those people can do and that would help us get clear on what the skills and what the criteria are. And there was a there were two different bids for that position, but I think it was because I think, again, I don't wanna be negative, but because it wasn't totally clear what we hoped they would accomplish the uh, review selecting one or the other it wasn't clear i, I don't want to it was it worked out fine they were really nice people i just mm -hmm. think we should be very clear about what why we're hiring them to do what okay could you repeat your first question is it oh it was is it money available is, or... is the money actually available or it might be available so the money is available to the town but it might be oh, available to yeah, us I meant, is it available to us have to make a request <laughs> So it um, might the be the town okay. council would have to approve that request and they could deny it unless I'm incorrect. So I suspect um, in order to get them to so approve it, be. they would also want to know what what we want to do with it. Right. We want to <laughs> do with it. <laughs> right. That's that will be definitely part of my motion. Um Erica, then Bernie, then Athena. I would defer to Athena first. No. Okay. Um if there is budget money to apply for, for to for the uses of this committee, um, I would first want to know number one, is there is there any money already allocated to this committee for our outreach purposes? I see Athena shaking her head no. 
so that would be my my first um desire for money to apply for before any consultant i feel like whatever Thank whatever you. outreach we end up doing and pub and publicizing whether it's putting up a website um do you know printing flyers like whatever we're going to do is going to require some financial support and i would put money there before i would pay a consultant and i'm not sure if there is a consultant to be discussed i would want to hear more about what what you have in mind uh bernie Agreed. and then athena okay um i i sit on the finance committee um so the um, one of the counselors raised the issue that we have this committee. It doesn't have a budget. There's no money uh, attached to it. And would it be helpful to have some resources for the committee? Um, the Collins Center was one of those things that was mentioned. Not that we have to hire the Collins Center, but there's some advantages and disadvantages in doing that. Uh, <clears throat> so we should, I think, uh, let the town manager know that we do have an interest in uh, we do have an interest in bringing on a consultant to assist in um, whatever Meg is correct. We need to specify what we want the 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 consultant to do. We do want to have that happen for one. For two, we may want to have some ability to print and distribute materials um, above and beyond what resources the town has available to it. And I, I really do think right. we need to, we have the town has a communications officer who we need to speak with. Um, right. She should be at one of these meetings uh, because she can give us some ideas about what resources are available, what she's capable of doing, what the town's technology is capable of doing and where there are gaps that we want to fill. Um, and looking towards uh, launching this in, um, you know, probably at this point, probably midwinter or late winter um, is, a, is a broad effort. Uh, <clears throat> I would, at this point, I don't know that we can put a dollar value on what we want. Um, we can, one of the advantages of working with the Collins centers are public, so we don't have to go out to bid. Um, <clears throat> Community Paradigm was the other uh, organization that was involved in uh, uh, working with uh, the in, in interested in helping to develop a, a charter. Uh, full disclosure: I've worked for Community Paradigm. Um, I mean, you can always contact Bernie and say the other Bernie, um, the guy who wrote my check, uh, and say what you know what are, what would you see as role. The other thing that I haven't done is speak with mass managers because the form of government committee and mass managers is willing to help us out. Uh, that would come at no charge. And these are some pretty clever people that could uh, help shape uh, the way we perform our analysis as well as, um, uh, you know, we're, we're not looking for somebody to do it for us, but help direct it and shape it. So uh, I would I would suggest that we do inform the town manager that we're interested in having some some pre cash or having some funding available, not worrying about where it comes from, because um, there are ways to adjust the budget and free cash doesn't the free cash we're getting doesn't all have to be spent in one lump sum right away. Uh, we we invariably retain some for. Um, unforeseen purposes. Uh, so so I'm not worried about it. It's good. If we don't tell them, it's all going to go away on Monday. So that's not going to happen. Erica? Or no, Athena, excuse me. Sorry. I just didn't see your hand. Go ahead. Um, I uh, wanted to say that the, the committee's request for any funds would go through the town manager. The council can't initiate its own appropriation. Um, my advice to you would be to start to put together an, a budget if you have multiple uses of funds that you're anticipating so that when the committee makes that request to the town manager, um, the town manager can present the, the appropriation request to the council with some background information um, 
explaining what you'd like to do with it and so forth. Um, kind of in line with Bernie's suggestion, um, Bernie Lynch from Paradigm has done some really remarkable um, outreach work um, and the Collins Center has, has great staff as well. So I think you have some options and it's worth, like Meg said, uh, considering what you'd like a consultant to do before you start thinking about how many dollars you'd like to request in funding. Um, we can also, I can also help do some research in terms of, you know, what would it cost to send a flyer to every single residence and, you know, printing costs and stuff like that. So if a member like Bernie, for example, wants to put, start to put together um, a budget request or an appropriation request, um, I can help do a little bit of the research um, to get that ball rolling. Erica? Thank you, Athena. That was really help helpful and, and clarifying. Um, uh, just wanted to say, as a result of this brief conversation, I don't feel clear on what we would be calling a consultant for, but I don't, that's not an agenda item. I'm not asking to continue discussion about that. I just think it would be important to have the input of the full committee and, and really talk about that. Um, but I do think that um, beginning to collect uh, actual potential budget line items for this committee in the same way that we collected ideas for public outreach is an activity that we can continue doing in between this these long stretches between our meetings. So I'm going to, Julian, if it's okay, uh, mm -hmm. at, at some point, like propose here, propose yeah, that- you can make a motion. Anybody can make a motion. It's not just um, me. Make your motion. So I'm going to motion that <laughs> we can, I can set up a similar co sort of collection mechanism for ideas for the uh, Charter Review Committee budget um, and what we might spend money on. That way we can have it in front of us at all times and sort of then when we come together, debate, decide, and put forward a request, a formal request after that when we can hopefully have the input of our three missing members tonight. That's my Okay, motion. excellent. I'll second that motion, but I do have some questions about it. Um, my first question is more broadly, uh, when we are going through the process of requesting free cash, is that free cash directly competing with the other allocations? Um, as in like, would we see a headline charter review committee competes with road paving funding for money, or is that just pulling it out of the free cash itself? So I understand what the impact is. Would you like me to answer? Yeah, please. So free cash, um, you, the committee doesn't need to specify the, the funding source. You can make an appropriation request to the town manager and the town manager can decide to forward that request to the council for consideration and then he would determine the funding source. Um, so you don't need to say we'd like free cash. You could just say we need some funds and leave it at that. Mm -hmm. um, but the answer to your second question is that yes, free cash is, um, it's being sought after and um, considered for a number of purposes. And um, I, I don't know if I would say that it's that the committee would be competing because I think the, the relative dollar amount that you would be looking um, for an appropriation is, is reasonable. Um, and in the council's budget guidelines that they um, sent to the town manager when he was developing his, his current fiscal year budget, they included um, a line that the Charter Review Committee may need funds um, for their work, but it wasn't included in the budget. So at the moment, we don't have financial resources. The committee doesn't have the power to spend resources itself. Um, we'll work together if and when that happens. Um, and so I think there is an understanding and support from the council that the, the committee will need some some resources to to do mailings and outreach and so forth. So I think there's support for that. Um, but I, I from the criticism that has already been received about the use of free cash from various areas, I would say that yes, that could help happen. Yes. Okay. That's what that's what I had figured. I was thinking in my mind, like we're probably not going to be requesting an extremely large dollar amount, but 
the bottom line is committee members should be aware that the way, obviously we may have a part in changing it at some point, but the way the budget process currently works is that if we put in a request, the town manager could decide to say, charter review committee has a, um, has, is competing with blank source. So I guess my second question with Erica's motion is, and I have three, so I'm going to get through my three and then I'll call on you, Bernie, if you don't mind, um, which is, I think it's great to get committee members' ideas and et cetera, but we're moving pretty slowly. And my concern is with free cash, if it's spent, is it spent? As in like, once it gets all out the door um, and we spend our free cash, however the current proposals are, or in a different way, is there a deadline that we actually do need to meet and that just collecting that feedback and not pushing through with it tonight will create basically an issue where we are, where we're stunting ourselves by saying, okay, there's a deadline on this that we need, we might need to decide by if we want funds. So I don't want us to sort of shortchange ourselves. If anyone has an answer to that question, that would be great. Um, I can yeah. speak to that. I can speak to that yeah. a little bit. Bernie probably can answer it better than I can. <laughs> but the, like I said, I don't think you should get hung up on the funding source. I don't think you need to worry about it coming from free cash or another funding source. You can just make an appropriation request to the town manager and then he will determine the funding source. Um, there isn't a, a deadline to spend free cash. Um, there are, are you going to correct me? Yeah, no, I, I mean, it, this, let me just put it this way. Don't worry about it. Um, there is no deadline. We can, you know, we, we, when we have available funds, they can be spent at any time for any lawful purpose by the manager putting together an order, it, finance committee reviewing the order and then sending it out to the council for the council's final review and approval. Um, if we, Typically, you want to use your whatever money you have by the end of the fiscal year. However, I used to be known as a master of this. You can ask the treasurer for a continuing appropriation, which will take it into the next fiscal year on spend. So the, the point here is let's not worry about everybody's looking for money. I've never been in a situation either professionally or as a in in a, is an uh, elected official uh, where somebody has needed money. And as Stan Rosenberg once said, politics are a lot of fun as long as you have money to spend. <clears throat> so let's not worry about that. Let's, what is it, the assistance that we need to help ensure the effectiveness of this committee? That's the question. If we need to bring in a skilled person or organization to prompt us a little bit in terms of our organization or to offer some direction or to critique our work, then we should say that and try to tie a dollar amount to it, rough dollar amount. Uh, if we're going to do publications, if we're gonna do mailings, if we're gonna do something that requires an expenditure of funds beyond what the town can do, uh, that the town's budgeted for, then the manager will tell us that and we can ask for an appropriation to do that. So let's let's not worry about um, let's not worry about the competition. It's not like there's tons of money out there. Our needs are going to be modest. Um, we have some degrees of flexibility here and we can uh, we don't have to sweat the details in terms of timelines. If we get thirty thousand dollars and we spend fifteen and we're going to hold another 15 till next fiscal year. I hope we aren't meeting in the next fiscal year. Um, we can continue that. Right. I guess my concern is at this rate, it feels like we may end up meeting in the next fiscal year if we can't sort of get the ball rolling and actually- well, sort of I mean, That's why I've been, that's why I've been such a nudge point. about, that's why I've been such a nudge about sitting down with our charge and the charter and mapping out right. where we start. So I'd like to sort of, I guess my feeling is I'd like to, now that I've asked my questions, I'd like to move forward 
with something, some sort of request tonight, but that's just my take. But, Meg and then Athena. So my considerable experience with budgets and asking for money is that you have to have a budget that describes why you need X amount of money. So, and maybe to speed things up, you know, especially a budget that ends in four zeros isn't very as convincing as one that's been thought through. Maybe a couple of us might propose uh, a budget. Maybe not, we're not quite ready yet, but you know, there need to be things you, specific numbers, dollar amounts that are related to what you want. We want food at these outreach meetings. Do we want, you know, the budget that money we ask for has to be related to how we plan to spend it. It's related to what we're planning to do. But maybe some of us, a couple of us could put that together. Although I'm not sure we're ready yet, but maybe I'm going to lower my hand. Athena? This is an exciting conversation because part of this <laughs> appropriation request process and but appropriations outside the budget is in the charter. And this is direct experience about how these things work and how much time they take when they need to go to finance committee for a review. We need to hold a public forum. Um, so it ends up taking, you know, maybe sometimes over a month to get an appropriation through. And um, so it'll be an interesting part of the conversation when we get to that point in the charter. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention, um, Meg just said food, and there are some restrictions about what we can and can't spend mm -hmm. our uh, public money on. And so um, I think it's a, uh, personally, I think it's a great suggestion to, um, for Erica to, to do another uh, collection of ideas and start to put together some, some uh, lines and estimated dollars, and then bring that back for a, a discussion at the next meeting. That's my advice. Okay. I guess I'm a little frustrated with how the budget process seems to be working, given that we don't have much control over where our money comes from. We seem to not, at least as a committee, be able to decide yet how much money we're asking for. And I worry that we're moving too slowly if this is a process, if getting this appropriation to actually get approved already sounds like something that might take a month or two, then we might actually be hiring someone in the spring, which feels too late. I would like to have someone hired much sooner than that um, and be able to at least get this request out the door sooner than that. So I was hoping to have more of a timeline in the we can hire someone in January, February. I don't know how realistic that is with the current process. Obviously, it will come up later down the road as we're discussing the budget process, but anything we can do to actually move this process forward more and not just be making a request that we don't really have much control over, it just seems like a recommendation to the manager to appropriate funds, which we haven't decided how much of yet, and then I'd like to actually get together a very rough budget tonight, make a request for that amount of money, and with some specificity, ask where it comes from. So we have a solid plan rather than just asking someone to help. Raphael? Yeah, I think, Julian, you, it seems like you are making some decisions already about what the resources will be used for. I'm not saying a consultant is not a thing that this committee should do, but I would love for the whole committee to weigh in in terms of what resources do we need. I'm not sure the timeline has to be slow. Um, I think Erica's proposal in terms of giving people a deadline in terms of when to get back there, sharing about what resources we need doesn't have to be long. Uh, and I think if we think about the meetings left in this year, I think we are in the position of having perhaps two more meetings as a whole group. I just think at our next meeting, like sitting down and looking at what people proposed and then doing that work then, as opposed to now, is what I would feel comfortable with. And if you think about your point earlier about concerns, about what this committee is asking for in regards to money, like it, it runs count, like rushing through, like we need to do the budget tonight. I, I would be very cautious about. 
others? I think it's important to be clear about what resources, what are the needs? And I think there's some things on the table in terms of the plan that we're talking about in terms of outreach and other things that should be thought about by the whole committee, I would say. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Bernie, go ahead. And then I have another. No, uh, I mean, Riffelt's uh, correct in what he's saying. I mean, we really do need to kind of plan this out and um, and, and, and look at this hard. Uh, we could um, <laughs> we could ask the manager for a uh, a range of funds, but that would be, again, just like whistle past the graveyard. Uh, we have an obligation as a, a public body to say what we need and say how we're going to spend it. And when we make a request for funding, you don't ask where it's coming from. Because the money, if if the, there's a need, an expressed need, and the money is available some, at some reasonable place that can be spent for some reasonable purpose, the uh, treasurer, the manager will identify that fund, those funds and where they're coming from. Um, once the council signs off on an order, then the money's available. Uh, and how it gets spent will have to be have to be determined because we really don't, you know, we really don't have uh, uh, most committees don't have the kind of legal uh, or, or organization uh, that's necessary to 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 issue uh, to to cut checks and write write contracts and the like. That contracts are are really the uh, the belly the, the contractual arrangements are really confined to the, the to the manager and his uh, his designees. So uh, you, you know we can go ahead and say we'd like to hire X Y Z to come in and do this that and the other thing and it's going to cost Y amount of money. Um, and then it will be up to uh, all to identify where that money can come from and for the council to agree with the whole concept. It may take a month, but the clearer we can be and the more precise we can be, the better off we are. And I, you know, I've, I've gone through this now for several years here in Amherst on two different finance committees and uh, you know, it's it's not as daunting a process as one might think. Uh, other comments, questions before we vote on Erica's motion? Meg? Could you restate Erica's motion, please? Or could she? <laughs> I, I didn't write it down. Erica, would you mind restating your motion? Not at all. Um, I'm making a motion that uh, as a committee, we asynchronously provide input and ideas on what would be appropriate um, items that this committee would like to spend money on for the purposes of a, of a formation of a clear budget to be approved or discussed and approved uh, at our next meeting. Second. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and vote on it. I'll... Uh... Start with Bernie. Aye. Meg. Aye. Raphael. Ah, uh, yes. Erica. Yes. And myself, I think I'll be a no. Um. So, on to our next agenda item, um, which is website structure. This was suggested by Dan, so we could theoretically postpone it until Dan is here. Um, but my understanding was he wanted to discuss the town website, specifically our page and how it's structured, what we should put up there, what we should share, how we should share it. So if folks have thoughts on that, I'm more than willing to hear them, but I would, I think it would be best to postpone this issue because Dan's not here to discuss exactly what he was thinking. And I don't want to speak for him. So should we call the vote? There's no need. To, no. I don't no. think I don't think there's any need to call the no. vote. No. Okay. Um, uh, Athena, yeah. who's who's our uh, webmaster? I maintain your web page. Maintain the web page. Okay, Athena's the webmaster. All right. 
because um, I, I keep referring back to our communications director, and I'm not sure what um, where we intersect with her and her job and her skills and the town's technology. Um, Sam Samantha Giffen is our new communications man manager. She's been really terrific. Um, I think it would be a great idea if you'd like to invite her to a future meeting and talk about outreach efforts that she's able to provide um, during, you know, she's, her expertise is communication, so she might have um, advice about outreach in general, and then she can talk about what kind of outreach she can provide through the town website, social media, and press releases, and things like that. Erica? Um, Sorry, but in in terms of in terms of our, the the committee's web page, I would make changes to the committee's web page. I will not. <laughs> I I don't want a committee web page um, formed by a committee. <laughs> 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 um, but I I will take suggestions, and if there's um you know I had suggested in the past um a public input form like we have for the council. Um, I'm happy to do that and make some changes to the web page, but um, I think there's a limit to, to how much we can get a committee involved in designing their own web page and my capabilities. And so. Okay. And what Civics Plus will allow, right? Um, Erica? Thank you. I had a question about uh, Samantha Giffen. And it made me think about the conversation we just had about sort of preparing some or giving some thought in the next weeks to what might be budget line items and that she might have some insight to offer us, as you suggested, about what things cost in terms of what the, the sort of she has in her mind or in her books, what, what it costs to do um, a public outreach campaign on paper or to do certain kinds of promotions. And I wonder if in the interest of sort of accelerating the information that's available to the to the committee, if it's possible to to reach out to her um, and have her kind of like email the committee or put something in our in our document center or um, or or initiate an exchange of information with her before the next meeting so that that can be kind of at least available or top of mind for committee members who are putting together their thoughts on how much we might want to spend on X kind of public campaign. I agree. I think that's an excellent idea. And I would be more than happy to send her an email and ask um, what we might be able to be done. I, I think th yeah. there is, there is creep. Uh, I, I think, we can't ask any staff member we want to to do things for this committee. I'm your liaison, so I liaise with your your this committee and our staff. Mm -hmm. If you need something, then you work through me. If we have nine committee members reaching out to all of our staff asking different questions, it's overwhelming. So while you are all well within your right to do so, I would encourage you very strongly to work with your staff liaison so that we can streamline these questions, get them to our staff, and then get answers to you in a reasonable amount of time. Um, not all of the information you're looking for would be a SAM question. Um, some of it, like mailings to all the addresses, we have that data because we send out tax bills, we send out census forms, so we have an idea of what it costs to send a postcard or a letter to all the addresses in Amherst. So we can gather information. What I would suggest is that Erica, like in accordance with the vote that was just taken, you gather the information that committee members are interested in, um, in spending money on, and then you share that information with me and whether it's from Sam or other staff members, I can start to put some dollar amounts, estimated dollar amounts with those items for what I can, um, and then, we you know, as long as members respond to those polls in a timely fashion, then we can try and get that done before the next meeting. Okay, excellent. Yeah, um, I guess I would ask if you wouldn't mind reaching out to Samantha about the possibility of having our meetings, like the fact that our meetings are happening when they're happening, and a link to join, 
in addition to being posted on the town website, maybe we could get it posted to the town's social media pages, Instagram, Facebook, et cetera. Is that a possibility? I will speak with Sam and see if okay. she's if she's um, available to attend a okay. meeting. If she is, then she can come and talk to you about all the different social media things. If she's not, then um, I can gather some questions from committee members and pass them on to her for answers and facilitate that communication. I think she would be willing to attend a meeting, but again, um, okay. I'm not sure about her availability and yeah. we'll do what we can. Sure. Um, other questions on this? Thank you, Athena. Yeah, thank you. Um, okay. Uh, number eight, community outreach, input, brainstorm, reviewing responses. So a lot of members uh, filled out the form that Erica sent out. Thank you, Erica. Um, not everybody did. No. Um, so I would love to see... Um, do you want to share that, Athena? Can I screen share it? Whatever you prefer. I have it up if you'd like me to put it okay. up. Sure. Yeah, go ahead. Thank you. Um, and we can review the responses. Uh, folks can add ideas and then we'll create an outreach plan based on this. I can't edit this form because it's a PDF or actually maybe I can. Hang on. I wasn't able to. It's just a PDF. Um, Not sure. Okay, I got it. I can do it. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Nope, that's excellent. Um, so I guess we could just review and sort of if folks have other ideas to elaborate on. Uh, I see what I put in. Um, and just read through it. If folks want me to read it aloud, I'm happy to. If I could comment while you're going through this, Go right ahead. If, you, if you recall, when I set up the forum, there were two options for public input, public outreach, which are sort of two related but slightly different things. Um, the primary question being, you know, collecting public input. What are the what are the formats or the venues or the the methods by which we want to collect input? Outreach being how do we want to let people know that there is a place to give input or that there is a place to attend a meeting or that there's a right there's an outreach piece that's a little bit different. So those are the two sections you're seeing here. Okay.
if it's helpful, I have taken what's in the public input section of this of the responses and sort of put it into a grid that sort of condenses them into what kinds of responses people had, and then we can kind of discuss those one at a time. Yeah, that would be excellent. Um, I didn't I didn't want to do that without consulting this group because this is the raw information as it came yeah. in, just lightly, lightly edited for readability, but I did organize things into sort of the categories that people came up with. That would be awesome. If you could share that, that would be awesome. I appreciate that you did that. That's great. Um, that might give us some material that we could actually make a motion on for an outreach plan. Is this visible to everybody? Yep, okay. that's good. Mm -hmm. uh, this looks like a grid, but I've I've listed audiences here. It's separate. It's not like audiences are only for this first right. row. It applies to everything. Is these are the various audiences that people listed as relevant or interesting to consult, right. and then under format, these are the formats. Everybody came up with their own ideas or priorities, but these are basically the categories that we came up with for what kinds of input forms of input we wanna collect and some slight sort of details on what that entails. I think the important thing that we'll wanna discuss is what kinds of materials or prep are gonna be necessary for any of those um, decisions. I can try to make this a little bit bigger. This is terrific, Erica. Yeah, this is, mm -hmm. this is excellent. Absolutely excellent. Is it just for, is this, this is outreach? Just for, this is just for the public input. Okay, great. Public outreach, I feel like is is a related but separate discussion, but okay. this is for like, how do we wanna collect? How do we wanna take great. in information? Excellent. Awesome. Um, really good. Yeah, this is really excellent. This is input, not outreach. That's right. Great. Um, yeah, this is this is absolutely wonderful. Um, so I guess for, do we have other input that people would like to add if you didn't fill out this form? Um, additional ideas, that sort of thing. Raise your hand. Okay, I don't see anybody. Um, Alrighty. Or or to comment right yeah. on to like help us, I think the I think the process maybe is to just um, lift up or or rank a little bit what seems right like the mm -hmm. best strategy long term the best thing we could launch with the best thing we could get off the ground and up and running really quickly the most costly that those kinds of criteria right yep. so we can make some decisions. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, go ahead, Meg. Um, I apologize that I didn't somehow I didn't fill this out and missed it, and I can't think of things to add. Uh, but I think it's the sequence of this is important, so that we want to be sure people know we exist, uh, so that when we ask for input, they understand why it matters. So that I think there's a sequence of. Uh, making uh I'm not I'm just not sure if this is a comment for this part of it or the outreach side but I think many people don't know we exist I think just to respond to that really quickly I think it was Raphael who put in the public outreach but it's relevant here the idea of creating a kind of um Raphael, correct me if I'm if I'm misstating this, but the idea of creating a kind of a, a short summary um, or like a one pager about what the charter and the charter yeah. is that goes that goes out with our public outreach or that sort of is a kind of introduction to what's going on here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is correct. Which I think is a great idea. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, wonderful. It, it's necessary. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise, yeah. we're not gonna we're 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 not gonna get useful useful and usable responses unless we right. draw some lines for people to color in between. 
Right. right exactly. <laughs> I, I agree. <laughs> so I guess, um, given that we've looked over this, had some discussion, et cetera, um, I will start with an outreach plan. Um, not an input, an outreach, and then I'll move to input. So I guess, and this can come back up in issue 14. Do we prefer a setup where I put a motion on the floor or someone puts a motion on the floor and then we discuss and debate that motion? Or do we prefer a setup where, mm -hmm. um, where we all discuss and debate and then a motion results from that? Bernie? Uh, I would prefer that we carry on a conversation between okay. us, yeah. among ourselves and not worry about forming a motion. I mean, we can um, we can certainly do things by consensus. Uh, I, I think that um, you, you know we can we can we can shape a you, you know shape a general plan and then move on from it, or shape a general plan and hand it to a member to to fine tune or. Okay. Um, you know, form a subcommittee, which I'm a little bit leery about because that gets you into a whole other thing with yeah. the open meeting laws. So we, we don't have to worry about formal motion okay. and so on and so on. We can, we can operate on the basis of consensus, probably yeah. ninety percent of what we do. Yeah, yeah. No, that, that makes a lot of sense. Um, okay. So I guess I'll start with my thoughts, which is I think a good next step might be for outreach choosing a time and location where we actually get to go out in the community and then based off of that choosing what questions do we want to ask how do we want to make people informed of what we're doing um i think having a townwide mailer with a google form qr code attached to it would be an excellent start and i'm happy to make a google form and make a QR code for the Google form and maybe send it to Athena to explore the possibility of having it sent as a townwide mailer um, and seeing what is doable there and what isn't. Um, so I guess that's one thought I'm having. Another thought is maybe we could, I don't know if it'll require a separate form or if it is just uh, just discussing, but I'd like to schedule an actual time, maybe on the weekend, maybe in the evening, where we go out and meet with a community and ask them questions, um, whether that be the general public, or we could even start by uh, assigning members to meet town councilors. And uh, maybe we could have, uh, Athena, do you know when the town staff, uh, like if there's any town staff gatherings or stuff that we could maybe attend? Um, we, we have gatherings that are internal. I, I did bring up at the last, um, department head meeting that, uh, the committee would be reaching out to staff, but I don't know that an in-person. Okay. Would be best. I, I think, um, just asking for staff input and they can send their feedback would be fine unless you okay. really prefer to have you know, invite staff. I think there are some, you, you might be more targeted, like there are some staff that interact with the provisions of the charter a lot more than others, um, like the finance department and the town manager and so forth. So uh, the planning department and stuff. So might ask for more specific feedback from those departments and then send out sort of a, a broader net to everyone to, to email feedback. Yeah, I think that's excellent. Meg? Um, I, I think that these different constituencies are quite different and require us to interact differently. So I wouldn't want to just show up at a staff event and say, what do you think? In particular, the council. I know before this started, after I'd been appointed, I said to someone on the council, actually, that I wanted to get together one-on-one -on -one with all the counselors. They said, no, don't do that. The whole committee should do that. Um, and so, for example, so I'm my point that different constituencies, I think need to, we need to deal with them differently. I would love to, for example, with the council, decide, are we gonna invite them to a meeting? 
Are we going to invite them to prepare their thoughts and submit it them to us? Are we going to have two of us meet with them individually? But it'd be, I think it's quite important that we hear what they think. And I don't assume they agree with each other, but I, I'm not sure how to do that best. But I would certainly not want to just show up at a staff meeting and yeah. ask them for their input. Okay. Would, would it be possible maybe if we could assign me for... I could create a Google form um, that collects input from uh, from like the general public or has that goal um, and bring it back to the next meeting. And maybe uh, maybe someone else, a volunteer, could do the same for town staff and town counselors. Um, Julian, what are you proposing because I just want to point out this this discussion, which touches the specific agenda item of like what kind of what kind of outreach and input are we doing, doesn't touch content. This is a this is like a conversation about format, which is I, I realize not we we're all eager to get to the content, but for in the example that you're giving, um. I don't have any problem or desire to slow down the process of creating a form or creating an, a, a mechanism or setting up a date for a meeting. But I, I am interested in knowing like, what is the Google form saying? And that's, yeah, a, that, that's a, that's a, a more collective process, I think, than we're, than we're giving it space for. By that's just why I was thinking that it could be brought back to the next meeting and reviewed and changed and amended and voted on live okay. in the meeting, if that makes okay. any sense. Um, after, but we first have to get it created. And I don't think that it makes sense to spend an entire meeting actively creating a form. I totally agree. Doesn't okay. need to happen in a meeting. Yeah. Um, broad strokes might be helpful, but I don't yeah. think to review every question. No, I, I agree. I think it might be better to, like, I can create a form, I'll bring a form for the general public and then we can review it. And if someone says, I think that question is too specific on this issue, or I'm concerned that this wasn't touched upon, et cetera, we can amend it and add to it in the meeting and then vote for it to go out. Um, so moving this along, moving this along. Um, I'm thinking other thoughts for outreach is, is it possible to, for us to tonight, and if not, um, maybe send out a form to schedule a time where we could go and meet with residents and go into one of the neighborhoods, et cetera, and maybe set up a table, set up some food, et cetera, and say, hey, here is what we're doing. This is our purpose we want to hear your feedback and have one person there sort of taking notes about what people say and have it be a very broad brush open session of we ask about, I don't know, four or five topics in the charter. Um, and then after asking about those topics, hear people's impact, input on the public process and engagement and all those sort of issues um, and take notes and sort of have a community event. So could I propose a time for us to do that, maybe? Or Bernie, go ahead. I, I'm, I'm, I hate to be a, a PETA about this, but we don't ever act together. Yeah. <laughs> we need to have that meeting where we sit down and go through our charge and go through the charter and say, this is what we're going to focus on initially. And, and I understand that it, I'm not trying to block the co community out at all. But I think at this point in time to go and have a community meeting, which, um, y you know, if you have, uh, um, it would just be very difficult to organize a community meeting where you've got some, uh, sp you know, some, some specific kinds of, or you get some reasonable kinds of responses from folks based on where we're at right now. Um, 
you know, I, I um, again, I'm going on the basis that I think that most folks have not read the charter or when they read the charter back when they voted for it, that's the last time. So it's very difficult for me to say, we, we, we gotta have these public meetings. You know, we have to have these, these social gatherings or this outreach kind of stuff. We're, you know, we, we need to get our act together first, I think. That's my humble opinion. Okay, yeah. I mean, I guess I'd rather us reach out to the public and see what they're interested in and let that guide our process more than letting our own um, priorities and ideas guide the process. We let what the public thinks guides the process. And then after that, um, use that to create um, our proposed recommendations and so on and so forth. And that seemed to me to be what the general consensus was at our first and second meetings about how to approach this is to let the public feedback come in and then for us as a committee to act based on some of that. Um, maybe but, your opinion has changed, we, I'm not sure. Uh, again, I know Rayfield has his hand up and I'm gonna ask yeah, his sorry. forbearance here. We have a charge. <laughs> we have to, it, 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 it's on us. Um, you know, to go out and say to the committee, broad community broad-based, what is it that you think about the charter? Isn't going to generate helpful suggestions for us necessarily. We have to be able to tell the community what it is we have as our charge and how we see ourselves approaching it and ask them for advice in terms of what they're, they're ideas are and how we intend to proceed. The community can't shape this process. We have to shape the process. That's our responsibility as a committee. Raphael? Yeah, I'm just thinking about the outreach element. I, I, I think like, yes, we have information on the town webpage, but there are lots of ways to do outreach. I think if you think of what I proposed, like, I think I love that Julian, you want to be out there connecting, engaging. That's to come. But I think we need to think about our own capacity and be thoughtful about what are the priorities when it comes to types of input opportunities. So to me, if you look what I wrote, look at what I wrote, just a one pager that finds itself in different places where this is what we do. Here are some input opportunities. We don't necessarily have to put the date, but this is to come. So we just want the community to know like, this is our charge, this is what we do. Here's some input opportunities that are to come. Before we sort of, I, I think we need to be clear about like really leaning into the outreach element and like grappling with what I think Bernie proposed a few times in this meeting. The two could be happening at the same time. Yeah, um, no, I agree. I think the two could be, we could yeah. be doing we could be doing both things at the same time. I agree. Yeah. Erica. Um I just wanted to acknowledge that I agree that it, with your statement, Julian, that the what one of the things that we talked about in our first couple of meetings was the need for um public input to um be a sort of primary source material of what we generate as as a report as a committee. Um, my interest is in having this be an informed inquiry. In other words, this committee needs to be fully informed and kind of on the same page before we go out with microphones in people's faces. Mm -hmm. And the 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 spirit of it is let's get out there and do the thing. And I acknowledge that and I'm with that and at the same time you only get a few shots at doing widespread public outreach before people kind of either lose interest miss the opportunity <clears throat> think it's all wrapped up and no oh, I thought they already did that you know so I just it, there's a sort of um it's like organizing an event it is a sort of you don't want to wait too long but there's a sort of precariousness right. about the right timing yeah. to get it right and it can't be too late and it can't be too soon and that's where i think i'm at with so the the my thought is figuring out the formats is key and i feel your urgency and i'm with it on setting a timeline so that we're not just in this 
uh, gray space forever, but that we have a timeline that we work to, to say on set date, we're gonna be in you know Groff Park or whatever. We're gonna be at a cafe with two, two of us are gonna be talking to people who walk by or whatever it is that we decide on. But I think that um, my feeling is that it's about the, the timeline at this point is almost, is more important than um, run out the door first and ask questions later. And I think that's that's where I'm landing. Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. Meg? Um, I agree with Bernie and Raphael and Erica, and I won't repeat, but I'll add one little thing, which is in support of the timeline, if we go out before people even know we exist, we're gonna get the same people commenting who always know what's going on. And since we've all of us said, we wanna to try to find different, to know, go deeper and reach more people. They have to know who we are before we, Yeah. Uh, and I agree we should get our act together about the charter and um, what's in it and what what are the different categories of things we might hear and where we're going to put them in terms of what's in our scope and and what what do we do about things that aren't in our scope and so on. I think getting clear about that would be really helpful. But my main point is people don't know we exist, or if they do, they're probably the people who are kind of very experienced. It's a small, teeny minority of people who are very experienced um, government watchers. Did we just lose Julian? Oh, dear. We lost our quorum and our chair. Mm. Well, let's pause for just a moment and see if he can reconnect. <clears throat> Wonder what happened. I'm going to lower my hand. Shall I text him? Well, he must know he's not connected. <laughs> Probably trying to get back on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thank you for doing that work, Erica, pulling it all together. It was terrific. Yeah, that's been very helpful. Erica, I would ask that you send... Um, copies of your your matrices to uh athena so she can because they're they're now public documents and i have to reference them in the minutes so people sure. need access yeah. to them so if you could send them off to athena um she okay. can post them where where it's appropriate and folks can access them and they they're they're very helpful there's, there's yeah and is there is there a second one that's about the output um, I'm, happy to, I'm happy to share them. The only reason I didn't is I just didn't get to break it all out ahead of our meeting. So I can finish that work and send it to Athena and it'll contain both. Great. Outreach. Really helpful. <clears throat> Meg, if you have Julian's number, you might try giving him a buzz. I don't have it. see if he's able what kind of problem he's having to see if he can rejoin us here he is oh okay i'll hang up you're back hi sorry um i had my computer charger in and in case for those of you who, are, who heard my cat in the background, knocked it out. <laughs> um, so sorry That's about always, that. It's always the cats, you know. <laughs> hello, Tico. This is the internet, so there's hey, always hello. cats. Hi, yes. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, so picking up where we left off, I apologize for that. Um, the Basically what I heard is and I would generally agree with the the point of we as a committee need to do our outreach, but we need to have it be somewhat pointed so that we're getting outreach we can actually work on. 
um, rather than just a broad, hey, what do you think of the charter, folks? Um, and I think that I would agree that that is an important step. So what I'm wondering is, does anyone smarter than me here have a proposal to sort of get us from the point of here's what we want to do um, and with outreach, how do we how do we do it as in when do we want to do our outreach, what question should we include in it, that sort of thing? Um, yeah, go ahead, Erica. I there's many ways to go about this in the in the it, just putting out one idea in the interest of sort of like moving it forward we could just sort of make up a timeline just from the ideas that have been submitted and discussed here put something out there just for us as a committee to then discuss yep we have something on the table everyone has had the opportunity to have input we create a timeline that says by said date, we want to have our first public meeting. By said date, we want to put up some sort of social media presence. Um, all of the contingency factors we've already discussed are noted, like who's going to do it, what is the budget, all of that has to be figured out. But we can sketch out a timeline and then put it as an agenda item for our next meeting. Yeah, to I agree. I move, think revise dates and you know, debate and discuss the order. Do we want to, I guess I could create a timeline um, and pick dates that we want to do outreach and also be more specific as in by this date, we will have met, mm -hmm. um, we will have created a Google form by this date, we will have done this, et cetera. And also to sort of, maybe in addition, I'll create a Google form sort of with topics to discuss, but also I think it might be helpful to sort of have in the timeline a proposal of what actually gets discussed. Um, when we go to these community meetings, would, I guess, like, do we want to discuss the budget? Do we want to discuss public participation mechanisms? Do we want to discuss the number of counselors on the council? etc. So um, what exactly are we aiming to get feedback on? Um, and sort of narrowing that down, I'm happy to put that in a timeline as well. Um, does that seem does that seem reasonable? Mm -hmm. So you're proposing a, to bring a timeline to the next meeting? Correct. With, helps us discuss. with outreach dates, as well as what, um, what we want to discuss and ask questions about during our outreach. Meg. Two, two, two quick things. Yep. It seems that, am I muted? No, it seems that uh, Bernie's suggestion of having a review of the charter is needed before we talk about what are the topics we want to <laughs> address with the public. Um, and I strongly, second, so quite unrelated, um, encourage us to work through groups that already meet so we're okay. not trying to create new uh, comings together. It's really hard work to do that. And I don't think we have time, but to a uh, number of suggestions, like go to the councilor meetings, the district meetings, because they're already you know, working very hard to get people to show up. And there are, uh, and there are many of these groups, church groups, civic groups, neighborhood groups. I've counted once like, I don't know, 18 or 20 neighborhood email lists. And I don't know if I still have that, but mm. lots and lots of neighborhoods, mm -hmm. all the co-housing communities have email lists. Um, many neighborhoods, Amherst Woods and um, all of the, uh, for example, at, at uh, the Mill District, everybody is on it. You, you can't get work. access to it directly, but you can get somebody who does. And that includes, I don't think 25 or 30% of those homes are affordable. So it's, it's very diverse people who live there. Awesome. So I just encourage us to use existing communications networks and gatherings because starting those up from scratch is a killer. And, you know, I've been to too many public part to give us input meetings when, you know, like 10 people showed up and they were mostly the same people right. we've all hear from. So those are two suggestions. Mm -hmm. 
I and really I like Bernie's. That's excellent. Bernie's suggestion of going through the charter and making sure we all know what's in it and what finding out what we think is important, what's to to focus on before we tell people what we want to focus on. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Great. I'll. I'm hearing that from a lot of people, and I I I appreciate that. So I'll definitely at our next meeting, it will be on the agenda, no matter what. Um for us to have the charter in front of us and discuss um, discuss what exactly we'd like to focus on, what questions we have for the public, et cetera. And it would also be good maybe to have an additional note taker at that meeting just to record sort of what questions we want to ask the public. I could do that or somebody else could do that. Um, Raphael and then Bernie. Yeah, uh, uh, just thinking about just moving quickly on various like public facing documents to just let folks know that we exist. And this yep. question about just reading the charter, there are charter review committees that they have short public face documents. And one ask is, you have a charter, you read it. Um, right. So that's even an ask that we could begin with in some of our early public facing documents. If you look at what's out there, those early public facing documents that other committees have, they're just brief. They're just yeah. trying to let folks know charter exists, we exist, input needed. Um, yeah. But I think having that in play quickly is really important. Um, mm -hmm. So I'd love to quickly move on that element. Great, um, Bernie? Yeah, well, let, Raphael's got, a, a, again, some good points, and, and I, yeah. I want to uh, agree with him, and I want to agree with Meg. Y you'll notice in my contribution to the uh, uh, questionnaire, uh, I listed a lot of existing groups, and having done community organizing and having to worry about contacting people in the uh, community, I think it's a great idea to start with, start with, existing groups. We have groups that touch in Amherst that touch about just about everything on everybody's life from, um, you know, from ultimate Frisbee to access community accessibility. I mean, they're all <laughs> over the place. We, we've got plenty to plenty to choose from and not try to make our own. Um, let's use what's there. And, you know, before we, we go and say to the garden club, can we come and talk to you about the charter? We also need to make the point that this is not intended to criticize any individual or this is to find out how the public perceives the operation of the charter um, in areas that we can make some uh, in areas where we could make some some reasonable short-term changes in it and, and again I'll agree with Raphael that uh, you know getting some getting Meg's suggestion that we get a letter out there uh, Look at uh, uh, maybe Raphael if you have some samples that you'd like to point out for those brief brief public facing announcements that would be real helpful to just to kind of let people know that we're out there and we're working and we'll be in touch soon. So yeah, that's excellent. I appreciate it. I'll just share my suggestion, then I'll get right back to you, Raphael. Um, so Meg, would you be willing to maybe draft up? A letter um, that talks about what the Charter Review Committee does, um, provides info about our website, um, and sort of says, hey, here's what we do, here's when our meetings are, all that sort of thing, and maybe send that information to uh, the Gazette and the Bulletin and maybe well, the Indy and the Current. Would you be, would no, you I be able to do that? Well, I'm not going to send it till everybody sees it obviously right. no i understand no i understand <laughs> i'm just saying would you be willing to draft something for us to look over sure okay excellent and i and wouldn't I... want to say obviously i it, you said uh, to mention the parts of the charter that we're interested in we aren't ready to say what those right. are till we have that <laughs> conversation yeah <laughs> so maybe... i could make it up you might not yeah like do you I want no do you want to <laughs> you want to send something to us to review yeah right um that would eventually okay. get sent to the local newspaper and say, hey, here's what we do. Here's when we meet. Give the info about us and give reasons that people might want to be involved. And so yeah. what you're describing has went from information to just a, a more of an opinion piece or, you know, I'll do that. 800 words or so. 
yeah, that seems, that seems reasonable, maybe before the next meeting. And like, I mean, don't editorialize too much, but editorialize to the extent that like you could say, I don't know, not to micromanage what you're going to say, but like, if you are a town staff person and want to run for mm -hmm. council, listen up. If you are a resident who feels public comment is too short, listen up. If you are a town councilor who is concerned about mm -hmm the amount of counselors, et cetera. Listen up, right. that sort of thing. Okay. Like, enough editorializing uh, that we can no. sort of spark people's interest, if that makes sense. Got it. Great, excellent. The next, I'll get it out at least uh, three days before the next meeting. Which awesome. Is December. Do we know when that is? No. Uh, get, no I'll look at my notes. <laughs> yeah. Okay, excellent. Thanks so much. I appreciate that. Uh, Raphael? Yeah, I think multiple ways matter. I think while Meg drafts a letter, I'll just perhaps bring a few examples of flyers or create one for us. Great. That's short. Great. Uh, mm -hmm. awesome. Before send, the you could send those to me too if you want me to include mm -hmm. the reference in what I write. I'm sure you'll all edit whatever draft I write. I hope, Great. You know. Perfect. Yes, and um, and I'll bring the timeline for us at the next meeting. And we'll actually actively review the charter. Great. Um, Thanks for perfect. initiating all this, Julian. I, I'm glad that we're actually moving somewhere. It makes me feel good. Um, <laughs> excellent. Um, so, create outreach plan. That's good. Create resources. We just discuss that. Um, do we want to create a form for issue for number 11 on the agenda? Brainstorming on ideas for charter revisions, uh, sort of piggybacking on what Bernie was saying about actively reviewing the charter. Um, could we maybe, I could create a form like what Erica did and send it to you all to ask for your revisions and that sort of thing, like thoughts about what you have concerns about, what sections of the charter you wish to revise as a member, just so we can get an idea um, of what people are thinking. Erica? Yeah, I've been giving some thought to that and the uh, the possibility of using a similar mechanism to what we've already, um, what we've used in this past uh, interim to collect ideas about public input and to use a similar mechanism to um, collect thoughts on or <laughs> highlights on committee members um, sections of the charter or particular notions about revision. And I think I am happy to set something up to keep that process clean and sort of organized. And I'm happy to do that once we have our initial kind of review, I will put something into place based on what comes up at our December 12th meeting. Um, I'll set something up that's that's coherent for us to collect ideas if that feels good to everybody. Great. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah, that sounds great. Um, so any other comments, et cetera? Because I think that that's a good plan. No? Okay. Um, so I guess moving us to our next issue, uh, you'll, do you want to create that form, Erica, or should I? the form for this what i was just describing yeah exactly yeah, yeah. i can i can work okay. on that af sure. after based on input uh, yep. from our next meeting yep okay excellent um future agenda planning we sort of already discussed that is there stuff that folks would like on the next agenda um i've gotten the memo for uh bringing forward a google form a uh sort of a timesheet of when timeline for us. Um, and then uh, what Erica was just discussing and then actually actively reviewing the charter. So that's a pretty full meeting already. Um, but yeah. if folks want to add, feel free. I, I wouldn't add anything to the meeting. Okay. <laughs> um, I, I really want to put the charter, reviewing our charge and the charter at the top. Okay. Because everything yeah. else will fall from that. You know, yeah. my, my thing okay. is always no, that makes sense. you look at what you can do that will facilitate other activities. 
Right. All right. Yep. So, the, so the big broad thing is we all agree that this is what we're going to do. <laughs> right. No, that that makes a lot of sense. I'll definitely put that high on the list. Um, yeah. Erica? Yes, agreed. Try to review top of the list. Just wanted to remind us where we where we kind of started, which is budget items, um, yep. which we are collecting hopefully in the next week, not budget, not yep. December 10th, but like in the next week so that we can yep. get that collected and and come up with a with a specific budget ask. Excellent. Awesome. That should um, be on the agenda. OK, Meg. No, I, OK. I just was no, no problem. Moving my hand around. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was no going to wait for the next next agenda um, item. Visioning sessions. Uh, this was just a thought of basically what Bernie was saying. I was sort of had a very similar idea of let's actually get into the charter and review it and envision what we want to see. So we've sort of already covered that point, if you will. Um, and that's similar to what we'll be doing at our next meeting. Uh, topics not anticipated. Erica, you had something? And then Meg? Meg, do you want to go ahead? Yeah, I'll be super, try to be super, really one minute. Um, okay. I'm curious. I don't want to discuss this now, but I want to put it out there sometime. <clears throat> the extent to which we're open to hearing ideas about things that are not exactly in the charter, but they're either the culture of the council or procedures that they've decided to adopt, like anybody can end discussion once a meeting, I think or uh, that's in like the that. charter that's in the charter um that well, some things that aren't like whether the town zoom account that doesn't allow participants to be seen is it mm -hmm. so the things that are administrative that are part of the culture that are part of uh things that are done to be efficient are those things that we want to talk about or or not and again I'm, it just occurred to me sometimes so I, that's all i was <clears> one of i'm not sure <throat> what to do with all that stuff Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I think that's a good question. The right to postpone is in the charter, but the other stuff you mentioned, I think, is great to sort of like, well, it's, it's intersectional with what we're talking yeah. about, even though it's not right. exactly, um, it's not exactly our charge. Erica? Uh, what I wanted to say was, this is not a, this is not an item necessarily for a committee discussion or vote. I just wanted to acknowledge for the record that this is the first time this committee has convened since the national election that happened last week. Oh. And I wanted to have it sort of on the record that that's part of the context in which we're working. And that the work of this committee, as I understand it, is very much about the, the sort of mechanics and the sort of ideals of a democratic consensus building system of government. And that feels very different this week than it did uh, mm -hmm. the last time we met. And I just wanted to um, say that out loud and have it on the record. And I believe yeah. in the work that we're doing, but it feels different. Um, mm -hmm. and I think we'll continue to feel different as we roll on into 2025. And I'm I'm just mm -hmm. saying it out loud. Glad to be working with you, but the 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 context feels a little a little darker. I agree. I think it I think it certainly feels more tense, at least to me. Um yeah. Darker. Thank you for that. Yes. Um thank you. Other topics before we I before I move to adjourn. No? Okay. Um I'm gonna make a motion to adjourn. Second. Excellent. Um Erica, you're first on my screen. Yes. Meg? Yes. Bernie? Yes. Raphael. Yes. Okay, we are officially adjourned. Thank you so much for all your help, Athena. I appreciate it. Thanks, Thank everyone. Thanks, everybody. Good night. Thanks, everyone. Good night.